is part 82 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the generic queue collection class. Queue is a generic first in first out collection class that's present in system.collections.generic namespace. That is the order in which we add items to the queue, the same order will be used to retrieve items from the queue. This queue collection class is analogous to a queue at the ATM machine to withdraw money. The order in which people queue up will be the order in which they will be able to get out of the queue and withdraw money from the ATM. The queue collection class also operates in a similar fashion. The first item to be added to the queue will be the first item to be removed from the queue. Let's understand the queue collection class with an example. We'll be using this customer class in this demo and notice that this is straightforward with three auto-implemented properties. Within our main method, we are creating five instances of this customer class, customer1 through customer5. First of all, let's go ahead and create an instance of this queue class. So queue, and what type of queue do we want to create? We want to create a queue of customers. The type here is going to be customer. And let's give it a meaningful name. Let's call it queue customers. And just like how we can specify an initial capacity of a list and a dictionary, we can also specify the initial capacity of the queue using this overloaded version of the constructor. But let's use the default constructor that doesn't expect any parameters. And then to add items to a list, we use add method. Similarly, to add items to a dictionary, we use add method. But then to add items to a queue, we use nq method. So let's go ahead and use that nq method and add an item to this queue. So let's add customer1 object. At the moment, there are no elements within this queue. So this customer1 object will be the first item within the queue. Let's now add customer2 object. So where will this customer2 object be added? This customer2 object will be added at the end of the queue, meaning after customer1 object. So what is this nq method going to do? Look at the IntelliSense. It adds an object to the end of the queue. So these objects will be queued one after another. So similarly, let's add customer3, customer4, and customer5. All right, so these customer objects will be enqueued in that order, one after another, because every time you invoke an enqueue method and then pass it an object, that object will be added at the end of the queue. Now, to retrieve an item from a list, we use you know, its index, the item's index within that list. And similarly, to retrieve an item from a dictionary, we use the item's key. But then to retrieve an item from a queue, we use dq method. So queue customers dot dq. And look at the IntelliSense. What is it returning back? It's returning a customer object back because this queue is of is a collection of type customer objects. And then look at what it is doing. It is going to remove and return the object at the beginning of the queue. Okay, so if you retrieve an item from a dictionary by its key, you know, it returns that item, but then the item will still be there in that dictionary. Similarly, if you retrieve an item from the list using its index, you know, it returns the item at that index position, but then the item is still going to be present within the list. But then if you use this DQ method, you know, the item that is present at the beginning of the queue will be removed from the queue and then returned. Okay, so let's store the item in a variable of type customer and maybe let's call it c1 and let's say we want to print the customer's id and name so c1 dot id and we want to print their name as well so c1 dot name so this dq method is going to remove and return the item. So after the first customer object is dequeued, let's find out the total count of items that are available still in the queue. And to find the total number of elements that are available, uh, that are present in a queue, we can use the count property, just like how we have used it with the uh, list and dictionary uh, collection classes. So let's say console.writeline, total items in the queue. So queue dictionary, queue customers dot count. 
And again, we can either use this count property or use this link extension method. We have seen how to use this link extension method with list and dictionary. So we would use that um, in the same fashion with the queue as well. So let's use the count property. All right, so let's go ahead and run this now. Okay, so look at that. The, f the output that we get, uh, the customer ID is 101 and name is Mark. And if you remember, um, you know, this customer one object has got an ID of 101 and name is Mark. So when we use this DQ method, since customer one object is the first item that is present at the beginning of the queue, that's what will be DQ'd. Okay, now let's go ahead and DQ one after another. You know, let's try and DQ all these customer uh, customers from the queue. And to speed things up, I have already typed some code. So let me copy and paste that right here. And this code is very much similar to what we have here. So basically, we are retrieving customer two, customer three, customer four, and customer five, all the customers. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And look at this. As we DQ customers, the count also keeps reducing. Okay? All right. So what is the purpose of DQ method? It's going to remove and return an item that is present at the beginning of the queue. And to add elements to the queue, we use NQ method. Okay. Now, is it possible to loop through each item that is present within the queue, absolutely, we can use for each loop, just like how we can use um, you know, the for each loop with other collection classes like list and dictionary. In a similar fashion, we can also use it with our queue collection class. So for each customer, let's call it maybe C, in um, customers, queue customers. So let's go ahead and print their ID and name and then the total items that are left within the queue. So here the reference variable is C, so let's go ahead and change that as C. All right, and let's get rid of this piece of code. So basically at the moment within the queue, we have these five elements, and then we are using a for each loop to iterate through the items within the queue. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And look at that, you know, it iterates through all the customers within the queue. And then look at that, the total count is still five as it is iterating through because the for each loop will not remove the items from the queue. It simply iterates through them. And then in this case, we are printing their ID and name and then the total items within the queue. All right, now we know that the DQ method is going to remove and return the item that is present at the beginning of the queue. Is it possible to return the item that is present at the beginning of the queue without removing it? Absolutely. And for that purpose, we have a method called peak. So let's go ahead and use that method. Look at that. When I say queue customers dot peak, look at you know what the IntelliSense says. This method returns the object at the beginning of the queue without removing it. So let's get this customer object out that is present at the beginning of the queue and maybe let's store in this variable C and then let's go ahead and print their ID and name okay so all we are doing here is using the peak method to return the item that is present at the beginning of the queue we are printing their ID and name and then we are also printing the total count so let's go ahead and run this Okay, look at that, we get the first item that is present at the queue and look at the total count, it is still five. So peak method is going to return the item that is present at the beginning of the queue without removing it. Okay, so that's the basic difference. Uh, you know, DQ method is going to remove and return it, whereas peak method is going to return that without removing. Okay, now what's gonna happen if I copy this piece of code, paste it here, and look at that. We are calling peak method again. Okay, and let's call this reference variable C2. Okay, now, so here it's going to return the object that is present at the beginning of the queue, which is customer one. If I invoke a peak method again, will it return customer one object or customer two object? 
it will return still customer one object because that is present at the beginning of the queue and it's not removed so no matter how many times you call the speak method you are still going to get the same object which is customer one because that is still present at the beginning of the queue all right now how to check if a specific item exists in the queue you know you can use contains method just like how we have used it with um, other collection classes like list and dictionary we use it in a similar fashion so for example queue customers dot contains so this method is going to return true or false so pass the object that you want to um, check whether that exists within the queue let's say I want to check for the existence of customer one object so if queue customers dot contains that customer object let's go ahead and print a message saying uh, customer one exists else let's say we want to print a message saying customer one doesn't exist so does not exist all right so we do have customer one object so what's gonna happen it's gonna print customer one exists message let's run this and look at that if it doesn't exist you know it comes into else part and it's gonna print that message all right so to add items to the end of the queue use NQ method to remove an item that's present at the beginning of the queue use DQ method a for each loop iterates to the items in the queue but will not remove them to check if an item exists, um, use contains method. What is the difference between DQ and peak methods? DQ method removes and returns the item at the beginning of the queue, whereas peak returns the item at the beginning of the queue without removing it. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.